what's up YouTube today's video I'm finally level 95 and this is part two of the build diary but for the one of the main topics of the video will be what are actually the meta league starters of Scourge League I know a lot of people predicted beforehand it would be toxic rain seismic trap so it'll be nice to see and look at PoE Ninja to see what are actually the most popular ones now in terms of my build, my character is level 95 now, so I've recently just leveled. And I have done most of the content in the game, and I do think all the content is actually clearable in this build. You will probably need slightly a bit more damage. I think my DPS is around 7 to 8 million, and it does make 100% delirium and probably doing the fear a lot harder. But I was able to do the Shaper Invitation, the Elder Invitation, and also Maven, so I was able to get six points of my uncharted realms and i have them in sexton mod additional guardian shaper map and cyrus progression not really sure if these are actually the best ones but basically the builds oh yeah i was also able to kill level eight awakener but no real crazy drops i think i've gotten the gloves like every single time now this build is at a crossroads where I need to really invest more into damage in order to be able to do 100% deli. And I do think that this build is capable of doing everything if you fully invested into it. Like you are missing a lot of damage in the claws, the helm, and a bunch of other stuff. But I'm thinking about maybe going Eternity Shroud in a little bit because I do think Eternity Shroud allows you to have the insane damage that will allow you to do the 100% deli with this 10 Scourge maps or whatever. But that's pretty much going to be in the future. The next immediate goal is definitely farming up for a headhunter. And I think I'm already a third of the way there. A headhunter, I think, is around 65 to 70 exalts currently at the moment. But let's get straight into the gear overview before we talk about what the meta builds of Scourge League ended up being. Overall, my gear has stayed relatively similar, although I did make some important upgrades. Now, at this point in the league, it is important to buy like efficient upgrades try not to spend too much on one piece that would depreciate too much because we do want to start saving our money towards head Hunter or mage blood and both those belts are absolutely insane power spikes and they will probably go up as people get more and more currency so the claw every single day i'm pretty much just throwing essences at the claws and i finally got one that was slightly better than my old one in fact, I'm pretty sure I've made a lot of my currency just from selling my old claws. And I do have another one for sale. And this one actually ended up being really good for someone who uses crit, but I prefer a claw of really high attack speed. So this one here, it actually was nice that it actually got flat mana. So I ended up having 104 leftover mana instead of like 69, which I had before. And I also have fire res. And for a build that's using one, two, three uniques, it's a lifesaver to have... A piece of gear with uh, some resist that normally you wouldn't have and this helm this was a complete disaster I had a different helm I used the Ashling T4 and it removed the mod that I wanted I think the int so I had to redo spite essences and I just happened to hit this helm it has a lot of regen 127.4 regen is a lot if you look at my life regen per second is 263 so this helm by itself is already half of my life regen but that was actually pretty insane and i pretty much just crafted on fire and lightning res and it has some bit of armor it is missing another prefix so we'll see what we do later on i could probably recraft this and spam life essences or something like or spite essences because i really need the int you see even with this 49 in helm i only have 107 my character is kind of dumb so this amulet i used some lucky divines and harvest and the harvest divines i got are pretty common so i was able to get a pretty nice roll it did remove the 24 strength and in so i had to re-blast it up after i did it so make sure that you don't need actually a perfect implicit because blessed orbs are actually pretty rare and annoying to buy red blade banner is identical no real change there now here is another sad story this ring right here I had an Assassin's Mark Re, I don't know if you remember from the last video. But basically, I did another Ashling Exalt on it, and it failed. It removed the Assassin's Mark, so I had to make a new ring. Actually, I bought this ring, I think, for 80 Chaos, and then I crafted it on Cold and Lightning. So you can see these two pieces of gear right here could use a Leo Slam, which I'm working towards in Betrayal. 
So that's going to be the next immediate goals. Now with this ring means that I'm using a Mark of the Elder. Mark of the Elder is an absolutely insane damage increase. And I think it's pretty much unbeatable until you go Eternity Shroud and want full shaped gear. You can see here this ring is an insane amount of cold damage to attacks. And this also happens to be 80% wed or attack damage if this other ring is a Shaper ring, which it is. And it also has a level 20 tentacle whip, which does do a substantial amount of single target according to Pop. Now the next pieces of gear I did not really get to change out. The gloves I'm still waiting to get a strike pair of gloves, but it does seem to be really, really expensive still. I've been trying to get maybe, uh, what's it called, a hunter pair of gloves. I do have a hunter glove here. I might spam some harvest on it in an attempt to hit strike with any sort of life or anything. Strike is a pretty low weighting. It's around 100. 250 I think and Maven orbing it will give me two strike and that could be a huge benefit So maybe we can make a Maven orb two strike gloves with shaper influence Now all this stuff and crafting is going to be on hold until I save up for a headhunter But a headhunter is already like I think it's around 64 to 70 X I wouldn't be surprised if it went to 80 or 100 However, currency does seem to be lower generated at the moment because how unrewarding scourge is but once people start getting nemesis currency and stuff like that i think that uh, headhunter headhunter will go up a lot in price the stygian is the same thing missing a mod had life had chaos res and i decided to just craft on some fire and cold res and this pair of boots same exact thing life and try res and move speed and with onslaught on kill now the main thing to keep in mind is that all these items are very resist heavy and it is very important because we run so many uniques. I actually picked up this Lionized Vision. It was actually only 1.5x. It does give me 30 lightning res but negative 24 chaos res but I actually still have like negative 39 chaos res so it's not the worst thing in the world. And even with this I was able to do Cyrus Deathless. But most importantly, this piece of armor has 2400, which is actually an insanely high roll. If you look at our physical damage reduction, we actually have 76%. So when we pop all our flasks, we have 80% physical damage reduction and 40% chance to evade. And also like 38% block, which we could actually get much higher. So in the end, it just comes down to the next upgrades. And I do think that I'll be trying to get the Blizzard Crown, the Strike Gloves and maybe swapping to Eternity Shroud and there's also the Tailwind Boots but at the same time I'm going to be buying Doctors to try to save up for a Headhunter because I do believe that the Headhunter unlocks all of the endgame content even if but the thing is you don't really need to do 100% Delhi and beyond as you can pretty much be just fine doing like 40% and still make a bunch of money as if you remember in the past Glenock in this region it was pretty much just farming this and they were only using like what 20% deli or 40% deli and in the end it just comes down to how much awaken sextants cost and I do think this time around without Tujin it will be a lot more expensive but now let's talk about the actual top league starters of Scourge that, and see what actually panned out okay now a lot of people ask me about my jewels and what type of jewels they should get so number one glorious vanity we have here this one is chance to avoid being stunned and this one is Ahuana and the important part about this is it gives us Immortal Ambition which gives us Slayer Overleech and this thing is actually super important in keeping ourselves alive on boss fights now with since I noticed I had 22% chance to avoid being stunned I thought I could get stun immune with this node right here you get 20% chance here and then I have another jewel here that gives me 24% chance and you can also get this on Abyss Jewels and then here we take 8%, 20%, 8%. So it all adds up to being 102%. So that means we are actually stun immune and this actually helps out a lot. After I got stun immune on Simulacrum, it became a lot, lot easier. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's probably a little bit more defensive option. I kind of went with it because I was trying to get level 95 and level 96. And being stunned is probably one of the number one ways to die because if you get stunned, that means you're not attacking. And if you're not attacking, you're not able to leech back your full life in one second. Now, next, if you see our jewels that I'm looking for is life, crit multi with elemental skills or crit multi in general. Crit multi with lightning also works that any sort of attack speed roll is also really good. The more specialized the roll is, the better 
the jewel will be in terms of the value. So if you have a super specialized crit bounty roll like with lightning, then it's going to be 18%, while other ones like elemental will be 15% like this one. And then attack speed works the same way. Attack speed with claws is the most specific one, so it goes up to 8%, while shield and one-handed only goes up to 6%. So that's something to keep in mind when you go search for jewels. But basically, there's not that many jewels, and I wish that I can get more jewel sockets, but this tree is kind of point star because of all the travel nodes. Eventually, maybe one day if Call to Arms is scourgeable, then we can change this tree up a little bit. And we'll also free up a few more points if we can use a Shrike Glove. So that's just something to keep in mind. And yeah, those are the main jewels. We only use uh, one and two two jewels actually and then a glorious vanity but i think the glorious vanity is currently 2.3x so it's going down in price a little bit so it should be a lot more affordable soon and you should definitely try to pick this up if you're trying to do any bossy and struggling with any type of recovery so it seems like every single time they nerfed basically the top builds there's always going to be another next meta build or next meta league starter and last league i think it was ice trap so let's go see what was actually the main meta skill during like day three the so during day three of expedition not hardcore expedition but normal expedition it was ice trap toxic ray and a minion build and then spectral shield throw and then more minion and this is also part of toxic rain so this time around, after they didn't really change much in the balancing, so I wonder what it will be. And you can see here that Seismic Trap still takes the cake, so it still traps at the top. Exsanguinate is also traps, but basically there's a bunch of people playing traps, so 35% in general. Now the main thing is people have realized that Seismic Trap mixed with Exsanguinate for clear is super, super broken and much more efficient than using Ice Trap. So that's why you see this huge, huge uh, shift towards, what's it called? For Seismic Trap and Exsanguinate Trap instead of Ice Trap. In fact, you don't even see Ice Trap on this list. Now Toxic Rain is next. It has a bigger representation. Now the reason why people like this build is pretty much because it's the next best thing. You nerf the best thing and then the next best thing will still be just as strong. And then it'll be stronger relative to all the other builds. Now you can see here for Toxic Rain, there's a pretty even split between Champion and Raider. And I did advocate people to try out the Berserker. And it's nice to see that some people actually did the Berserker. But not that many. You can see the majority of people are still playing, uh, what's it called? Raider or Champion as Toxic Rain. Now, next here we have the Minion skills. And this is, I'm actually surprised there's so many people playing Minions still, but... You see, there's not actually that high level. 89 is the highest minion player. And it goes to show you that there's a lot of people who are just die hard minion players. And they'll play minions to the end of the world. You don't see raised specters. And I think, I'm not even sure what the raised, this, this build is anymore. And this is pretty much just a, not a raised specter except they don't have, what's it called? It just shows the summon skeletons at the moment. And then next we have Lightning Strike, so this is kind of like the Spectral Shield Throw of the League. So everyone who likes playing Spectral Shield Throw pretty much are playing Lightning Strike or something similar. Kinetic Blast is another build that is CF Gladiator. So you can see here, this is actually pretty interesting how there's some people up top as Instacker. So this guy is actually playing the most budget Instacker known to mankind. He's using Thunder Fist, but it's pretty cool. You can actually go in stacking. I'm not really sure how exactly this damage feels with 2.6 million, but it might be enough to kill some bosses. Superior Grand Mana Flies is pretty interesting. But you can see here the majority of people playing Kinetic Blast are actually Gladiators, and the Gladiators are all playing Kinetic Blast Corrupting Fever, which is the build that Grimrow did, and this person is actually doing. So they're all playing... Corrupting Fever or, yeah, Corrupting Fever. So this is another one of those builds that's like, but you can see that none of these people, and this person's 94. So the rest of those Defiance, corrupt, the rest, Corrupting Fever, and eventually this will transition over to Tornado Shock Corrupting Fever, and it relies on a Bleed Explosions to have amazing clear and damage scalability. But basically, 
It's kind of funny. Between Expedition and Scourge, pretty much the exact same thing. You have traps at the top, then Toxic Rain, then the, some minion builds, and then some uh, meta skills that people who like playing, like Lightning Strike and Kinetic Blast. And lastly, we have a Spectral Shield Throw. So you can see, even though they didn't really change much, people found out different things. People found out that Seismic Trap was OP. And then Toxic Rain has always been strong. And then since they nerfed Special Shield Throw, the next best like supposedly melee or strike skill became popular. And that was Lightning Strike. And then I think Kinetic Blast has always been kind of popular. But this is pretty much like Exsanguinate or what's it called? Or Gladiator. So you can see exact same breakdown as last league, but slightly different flavors. And it just goes to show you that if you don't really change up the meta at all, it's just going to be the exact same thing. And the only thing they did was they removed Forbidden Right, and they also removed Spectral Shield Throw. So that's why the, that's I feel like one of the big problems with the league is that there's not any really new builds yet. I think Poison Concoction could have a resurgence. I know in I don't know if in SSF Hardcore more people are playing it, but where is Poisonous Concoction? I guess not that many people play, played it, but yeah. Anyhow, that's about it for the meta skills or the meta league starters of Scourge League. And now I'm going to showcase a little bit of bossing footage with the build of Lightning Strike because the build is actually super, super strong. And I'm actually surprised how easily like 6 to 7 to 8 million DPS was achieved because I do think that this gear all put together is probably around like 12x maximum. And that is a pretty good amount of damage for that level of investment while at the same time giving you some of the best Mac clear possible. So now after you see the character does have the damage and I do think that the main thing in Scourge League and a lot of the aspirational content is more damage than defense. It does feel like at a certain point no matter how much defense, how much armor you do, eventually the mob is just going to one shot you especially with how the formula for armor works. But you will not get overwhelmed or die if you have infinite damage right and that's a whole concept by which Deep Delve always worked. Deep delve, the monsters will one-shot you, but you were able to clear most of it if you just had a really fast build that did a bunch of damage and had a lot of some sort of like evasion or chance to dodge. 
But even then, damage and freeze is probably everything. So I do think that maybe switching out of Secrets of Suffering once you have perfect gear with like max crit. Because at this point, you can't really get max crit without using a Hatred Watcher's Eye or something like that. And it would take a lot of investment to get max crit. But in the end, I do think that damage is the main thing. So I do think that I'll probably transition from this build into Eternity Shroud, Frostblades, or Lightning Strike. Purely because the damage is so much higher on an, an Eternity Shroud build. But I was considering Self Chill, but I don't think that Self Chill has the damage ceiling of Frost of Eternity Shroud. And the build doesn't really need to run any faster because it is already so fast. And playing Self Chill, you have to use the Fulcrum, which means that you will not be able to use Whirling Blades and you'll have to Leap Slam around. And I really, really like Whirling Blades. But that's going to be the plan for the next few days. Next few days, definitely going to try to get the Headhunter or Mage Blood.